Okay, this is how you do uh, energy flow computations with a digital oscilloscope like the LaCroix. Now, as I've pointed out before, this particular LaCroix oscilloscope uh, only has one of its input channels uh, operational. The other one uh, we haven't been able to use at all because it has a DC offset issue. So all of my measurements have actually been made on just one channel with this scope, which is why I haven't shown this kind of a measurement before. Uh, but even using one channel, by using the scope's storage features, I can still show you uh, the computation on stored traces uh, um, and show you just how the energy flow is done. Okay, so what I've done is on the top trace here, I've got the trace of the, this is the battery voltage of the, of the Ainsley circuit driven by the Aaron uh, 555 timer and trace uh, uh, the top trace here is uh, a uh, stored trace of the uh, battery voltage. So uh, you can see here that it's um, 25 volts per small division on that radical scale. There. Let me bring up the uh, radical intensity a little bit. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, each one of these small divisions is 25 volts, so the baseline there is sitting just under or just at 25 volts. So the battery voltage that the scope picks up while the circuit is running is slightly under 25 volts, and we can see exactly what it is uh, if we need to. And there are the spikes, uh, the positive spike and negative spike that indicate uh, voltages, and you can see that that bottom of that negative spike, even on this scale, is slightly below the zero baseline, which indicates that for a brief moment indeed, the battery uh, is experiencing a reversed voltage, which would uh, uh, equate to a uh, brief uh, charge pulse going into the battery. Okay, And so there are some spikes in there that indicate at the battery that uh, uh, voltage is fluctuating in a manner that could be indicating charge. doesn't mean that the battery is charging, but it means that the voltage is indeed fluctuating there. Okay, trace 2 here is, uh, tr or trace B is the memory trace 2, which I have stored, which is the standard uh, uh, voltage drop across the current viewing resistor, and uh, 200 millivolts per small division, so just like normal we've got 400 to 500 millivolts as the top of that, and then there's the spikes that Aaron likes to talk about. Those are the uh, inductive spikes on the trailing edge of the current pulse. Okay, Down here is the instantaneous power trace that is made by multiplying these two traces together at each individual point along the way. So the instantaneous power trace here it says V squared, but of course since this is actually a current trace, this would be volts times amps, which was, is of course watts. Okay, and uh, you can so you can read this V squared as watts. The actual uh, uh, numbers, uh, the actual value would be uh, one quarter uh, of the numerical value because we're using a 0.25 ohm uh, current viewing shunt, right? instead of a 1 ohm current viewing shunt. If it was 1 ohm, the values would read directly. Alright, so uh, here we've got, uh, say, 10 watts per minor division. Uh, divide that by uh, uh, 4, or multiply by 0.25, and you can see that we're just slightly over, the peaks there is just slightly over uh, 10 watts divided by 4, so it's around 2, 2, two and a half watts, or something like that, at the peak. And uh, since that's not a straight line going across there, the average wattage during that one cycle is somewhat under 2 watts, like everybody's been saying, like I've been saying, like Ainsley's been saying. Okay, down here we have the integral of this, which is the area under that curve. So at any given point along this curve, you're reading the energy at that time, okay? the sum of all, from if this is zero time, then the sum of the energy that has been transferred here, and here, and here, of course there's no energy being transferred when that power is at baseline, right? So there, there, 
and this is including those spikes, right? The uh, computation reads this signal at a much, much higher resolution and computes that energy by adding up all those little time slices just like Rosemary has been trying to explain. This is the mathematical process of integration. And this curve here, if you just read whatever the value is of the point at that particular time, that gives you the total energy that has flowed from zero time, wherever your trace starts, to that particular time that you have of interest. So now you take a, number, a known number of cycles, say one, two, three, four, read right there, that is the energy transferred over four cycles, and then you multiply that by the number of cycles in the time period of interest, and you have the energy flow. And that takes into account all of the reversals and flip de doodles and whatever that happen in the spikes. Okay? Now, as far as the number of points that are being used, okay, I have control of that. What I've displayed here is just a rough case using only a thousand points of the trace, but I can. Uh, that's a trade-off between processing time on the scope and um, resolution, right? I can use all the points that the scope is recording, but in real time that slows it down, okay? So, but here I'm not concerned with that, so I can crank up the number of points that we're using uh, for the math to some ridiculously high number. This is a 500 mega sample per second oscilloscope. So I can get really high resolution uh, in terms of the number of time slices that are being added up to do that. So the more time slices I use, uh, the higher the resolution and the more accuracy that I can get on those measurements. Okay, now I haven't tried this yet. Let's see if uh, we can actually get parameters on these signals. And uh, the display is kind of messy. So it looks like we can only get them one at a time. So let's just look at the at the integral down here. And of course I would be displaying different values down here. But uh, it does look indeed like I can get parameters on those on the integral curve and by properly programming in the constant in here, I could actually have the scope give me the direct readout in joules of the value of that signal. Pardon me. It's been a, been a long breakfast. And I can do that with any of those traces that I had displayed uh, when I was looking at it over here. Yeah. Okay. And that's where we're set right there. And the really nice thing about this oscilloscope is that that little button and I get that. Oh, I wish this was my oscilloscope. Wouldn't that be nice? But then I'd have to pay for the repair bill. It's going to cost four large to get that DC offset fixed and have the thing recalibrated. Okay, thanks for watching.